Well, hello again. <laughs> Take two on this video. Um, you might have noticed my microphone doesn't sound like old bums anymore. This is because I remembered that Lani has had a um, lavalier mic stashed in her underwear drawer to keep it away from the cats because the cable is really small and thin and they love playing with it. And I thought I'd give it a try, recorded a whole video and then record, realized I'd recorded the audio twice so it was all echoey and weird. So hopefully we'll get it right this time. So yeah, I've got a couple of things I wanted to show off. Um, uh, firstly, I've added a flashlight so that your character can see in dark places. Now, um, I'm pushing the flashlight button, but nothing's happening because I don't have the flashlight yet. So let's go and find it. I think I left it on this table over here. Let's pick it up. And now, Let's, uh, let's run in here. Oh, look, what's that? A basement door? I'm frightened to go in there. It's so dark. But let's switch on the flashlight, and now we can see. Sort of. I'm purposefully not making it too bright. I want places like this to be dark and gloomy and kind of scary. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd show off how the code for that works. And... Um, a couple of other things as well. Um, you might notice that uh, the flashlight has this really nice kind of light and shadow pattern around the edges like a flashlight beam would actually have in real life. Um, yeah, let me actually start with how I did that. So if we go in here and find the flashlight, I had to create a texture for that. And I started with this image which I found somewhere on the internet. Um, the checkerboard pattern is just showing you that it's a, a transparent image, like that, that section is transparent. And all we're interested here is the alpha channel. So if we switch R, G and B off, alpha is essentially the transparency and that's where all this information is stored. Um, and then to make it usable by the actual flashlight, um, I created a texture um, we covered textures in the last video, and uh, um, basically I could just have plugged the alpha channel into Emissive Color over here, but instead what I've done is I've put a multiply node in and connected it to a, an intensity parameter um, so that I can scale it, which essentially means if I open not the actual material but an instance of it, like a little copy that's editable, um, I can actually run the game. Uh, oh, I'll have to go and pick up the flashlight again, won't I? Uh, let's do that. Uh, can't pick it up if you can't see it. There we go. Um, and now I can adjust this value and you'll see the settings change in real time, which is very handy for kind of dialing things in. But I was happy with 0.7, so we'll leave it there. Okay, so how does the code work? Well, this is the interesting bit. So this is the player blueprint. Inside here, we have all the code relating to the player. So this handles input from the gamepad. This section handles input from the mouse. This section handles jumping. Uh, this handles keyboard input movement. Um, a lot of these are here by default when you when you create a default uh, player blueprint, um, Unreal Engine kind of builds all the stuff for you, and then you can add to it and delete the stuff that you're not using. I've added in a couple of things like a camera head shake here, which is this little bit of code here. Um, the run function, um, the line trace, which we'll get to in future videos, which is part of the interaction system, and then the flashlight itself. So here is the code, and this is how it works. Um, in project settings, under input, we can define a bunch of keys um, that do certain things. And you can see my interact button here is E, and I've set one flashlight uh, for flashlight for 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 the the letter F. So the game is this function here is essentially waiting for you to push F. So when you push F, the first thing it does is check if the variable has flashlight is set to true or false. Now, I made that variable myself, um, and it's a Boolean variable, which just means it's either true or false. 
um, and it's set to false by default. Um, if you want it to be set to true, you need to go and pick up the flashlight. And I'll show you that little bit of code quickly. Um, if we go to blueprints and we open the flashlight blueprint, um, you can see here um, this event here is part of the interaction system, which we'll get to in a future video again. Um, and uh, again, we're checking if the character has the flashlight. If the character does have the flashlight, we just print this string over here, which says already in inventory. Now this, the string over here, this is a, a debug thing that's not actually going to be in the game. It's just for me, for debug purposes, um, just so that I can see what's actually going on in the code, like while I'm playtesting. Um, and uh, but if the check is false, then we set has flashlight to true and then destroy actor, which essentially removes the item that you've just picked up from the world. So that's pretty straightforward. And then back in the player blueprint, um, if obviously if the player has the flashlight, if the player doesn't have the flashlight, there's nothing connected to the false pin here because then the F key is going to do nothing. If the player has the flashlight, the next check we do is, is the flashlight already on? Again, a Boolean variable, it's either true or false. If the answer to that is false, then we set the visibility of this spotlight component and uh, play uh, the sound of a switch. Now, I'm just using my standard light switch for, for the time being, and uh, uh, I'll probably change that later. And then we set, is flashlight on to true? And we do the reverse if this branch is true, is flashlight already on, then we set the visibility to off, play the little switch clicky sound and set the, the Boolean variable is flashlight on to false. And that's how the code works. Now, the light that we're turning on is in here. Um, you'll see a bunch of things inside the player, com the player blueprint here. We have a, a capsule component, which is essentially the collision box for your player. This is, again, I'll get to this in more detail when we talk about the interact system, but this is how the game knows the physical space your character takes up and when they bump into something. Um, this thing over here is the camera shake component. I'll probably do a video about that at some point, but it's also pretty simple. Um, the camera, this is obviously what your character sees, so you can see it's positioned slightly behind the head. Um, you can play around with this and get it like wherever you want. Um, and then there's an arrow component just for reference so you can see in what direction your character is facing. And then this, the spotlight, which is your flashlight. And so you can just dial in whatever settings you want over here. And here again is where we set the, the, the beam pattern with that texture, I mean the, the material that we designed. Um, yeah, and we just switch this light on and off. And that's basically it. It's as simple as that. Um, this is like the simple stuff. So the question then becomes, uh, what happens when you pick up other items? How do you keep track of whether you have them or not? Now, I could just have a variable like this has flashlight for every item in the game. But then if you want to see them in like an inventory screen, you have to write a fairly long and inefficient bit of code to go and check the value of every single one of these and then draw in the item into the into the inventory screen. So I've been following a series of videos on YouTube by a guy who is, is des, um, as part of a, a tutorial, is designing an, uh, an inventory screen, an in the whole inventory system really, that's uh, way more complex than what I need. It's the kind of thing you'd see in an RPG. Um, where uh, items have a cost, you know, so that you can buy them and sell them to shopkeepers. Um, and uh, the inventory system can you be used for containers that you open in the world, as well as your own personal inventory. Um, and it's more than I need, but um, part of the whole point of this is I need to learn how to do this stuff. Um, there's two slight problems with with this tutorial. Uh, the first of which is that this guy is using an, an interact system that's slightly different to mine. It's mainly the same, but slightly different in several key areas. And the second problem is he hasn't finished making the videos yet. <laughs> so I have no idea how it's going to turn out. 
Um, but I am following it and I'm in the process of doing it right now. I can show you what I've got so far. We start by creating a struct, which is essentially a collection of variables in a kind of bucket which serves as a template. Um, so every item that you pick up has these variables attached to it. The name, the description, a thumbnail image of it, a 3D model, and a variable, another Boolean variable which checks to see if the item can be stacked. In other words, if they are, if you can have multiple versions of the same item. Um, and then that uh, struct feeds into this thing, which is a data table. And here you create a essentially a row for every item in the game. So you can see I've got a flashlight, and here's all of the variables from the struct. The name, the description, an item thumbnail, a 3D model, and whether it's stackable or not. I've got an entry for a key here as well, just for testing purposes to see how it works. Um, and then there's a inventory component blueprint with this bit of code in, which um, this is all brand, brand new to me, but I do understand what's going on here. Essentially, every time you add something to your inventory, um, the first thing it does is it looks in your inventory for that item to see if you already have one of those things. Um, if you do, then it essentially takes the item that you've picked up and adds it to the one that's already in your inventory. And if you don't, it just puts in the item that you've picked up. That's essentially what this bit of code does. Now, none of this is implemented yet, which is why I'm still just using a Boolean has flashlight for the flashlight. But eventually, this whole system is going to control everything about the way the inventory works, presumably, <laughs> because I don't know, because the guy hasn't finished the tutorial series yet. Anyway, that's about all I have for today. Um, I plan on making more videos in the next few days um, that go into greater detail, particularly with regard to the interaction system, which is fairly complex. Um, and yeah, that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe.